Um, can you guys uh, hear me very well? Is there any kind of echo or background noise or is that just fine? Uh, just give me a heart if it is okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, once again, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Abhijit and uh, I am also known by the pseudonym ABX. I belong to uh, Duckcon group Trivandrum, aka DC0471. Um, I am very uh, glad to be here today. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, it is a pleasure to be here. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate uh, the keynote of uh, Jason. You know, that was really wonderful. You know, that was really, uh, you know, impressive uh, keynote. And, uh, you know, along with me, I have a couple of, uh, you know, team members from uh, Defcon group Trivantrum today. Uh, like we have uh, my, my, my Defcon Trivantrum teammates, Aditya, Srihari, uh, Taufik, Alex, uh, Praveen, Vishnu, and Plucky, uh, along with Alex. And, uh, you know, we are all happy to be here. Once again, uh, you know, uh, it's a privilege to be, uh, you know, here in this village. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, give me a second, guys. Give me a second. Let me drop the mic here. One second. Uh, really good. Sorry, guys. I'm pretty new to this platform. Uh, give me a second. Uh... Hey, hey, one day. So, could you please help me with this mic? You know, I just need to you know, drop this mic and uh, speak in loudspeaker. Could anyone help me, please? TX? Uh, yeah, you have to hold your. Uh left mouse button for a while and it you can just throw the mic away what left left what left shift key the mouse button right uh, yeah the mouse left mouse button that's how you do it okay cool uh Okay, sorry again for the trouble, guys. You know, uh, I'm really new to this platform. Okay, uh, once again, uh, going back to the site, uh, we managed uh, the DEFCON group Trivandrum, which is in India. Our location is, uh, you know, Trivandrum, which is a very small city uh, in Trivan uh, in uh, India. So uh, we have started our DEFCON group, uh, you know, in January 2018. Uh, we have organized a couple of hacker meetups and conferences uh, during the past events with, uh, you know, multiple tracks and CTFs. Uh, we have more than 15 organizing team members, which are hardcore uh, team members. Uh, you know, this is like a brotherhood, uh, you know, for me and uh, everyone in my group. Uh, in, uh, like also hosting, we are also hosting a hacking podcast uh, in Malayalam language, uh, which is our native uh, native language. Uh, you could. Uh, view that uh, URL in there. Uh, it is kind of uh, interviewing local hackers and uh, cyber security professionals. Uh, we can also, uh, we also connect regularly before Uh, uh, move to the next slide, please. Uh, here are some of my, some of our pre, the photos of our, some of our events. Uh, we had the opportunity to have a good set of speakers in our previous meetups. Uh, I think uh, that is it about you 
know our uh, defcon group trivandrum i think uh, we can go to the uh, technical presentation now uh, please move to the next slide as you can see uh, the title of my talk would be uh, building an internal red team uh, for your organization uh, it is like uh, building a practical red team for your uh, within your organization i say as i have, uh, yeah next slide please as i have mentioned uh, you know uh, as i have mentioned uh, my name is abhijit and uh, i am also known by uh, the pseudonym abx um, i am leading uh, open sea security operations in a global financial technology company i am also uh, you know the former deputy manager for cyber security in nissan motors uh, prior to that i used to work for ey as a senior security analyst i have a, a, a you know a nearly uh, 10 years of experience in security domain i am also uh, the founder of uh, a community called uh, teamvillage.org and no it is not associated with defcon villages um, like i mentioned earlier i am also the lead of uh, defcon trivandrum community uh, recently i started running uh, a blog called tacticaladvisory.io uh, which is a blog dedicated to adversarial simulation and the team in tactics uh, it is still a work in progress i am still working on it you know just to uh, get things started moving to the next slide uh let's make uh, some things clear first i don't really want to uh, you know do an intro about vulnerability assessment pen test or a teaming but i just want to make some statements uh before uh, we go ahead uh, further into the slides moving on to the next slide uh this is just a statement i think you can see the slide yeah yeah this is just a statement vulnerability assessment it is not red teaming uh, like you know also vulnerability assessment assessment it is not penetration testing as well so we are all know like uh, what is vulnerability assessment it is about uh, uh, targeting a system um, an application or a network just to identify uh, the list of uh, vulnerabilities like you know what are the non weaknesses in that system list them down along with the remediation plan and hand it over to the uh, what kind of hand it over to the uh, you know appropriate teams so that they can get it fixed so that is called vulnerability assessment it is not red teaming i will go to the next slide again penetration testing it is also not red teaming uh, but pen testing on the other hand compared to va it is more focused towards the goal maybe uh uh could you please go to the next slide oh, okay okay this is fine this is fine it's fine okay maybe we are targeting an application or infrastructure our only goal would be compromising that system and get into it the pendency report also reflect the same rather than listing all vulnerabilities we are facing a problem now right you know nowadays we cannot differentiate between vulnerability assessment and pen testing reports a pen testing report may list all vulnerabilities in the target system uh, you know instead of uh, the exploitation and uh, how the attacker got into the system i used to uh, you know for my day job i used to see external pen testing reports with ssl issues only you know just just imagine that just think about it i used to see pen testing report penetration testing reports from external vendors which are having ssl issues as you know in a pen testing report that is really weird it is kind of confusing now you know if anyone here also feeling the same uh, just let me know like you know the confusion between uh, the vulnerability assessment and pen testing we are seeing it in our day day to day life you know these vendors or uh, these professionals they are giving us the you know va and pen testing reports you know there are is kind of very confusing we don't blame them here but i am getting muted sometimes i don't know why okay as the last statement i also want to mention that pen testing is not routine 
I will, I will, I will come to this point later, later in the presentation. Uh, can we go to the uh, next slide? Okay. So, uh, like you know, most of us know uh, the meaning of red team or what is red team, right? Uh, we have a cool definition from uh, redteams.net here. Historically, red team, the term red team, it originates from the military teams which would be imitating the role of adversaries. They will try to mimic the attacks against the military base. Explanation about red teaming. Uh, could you please go to the next slide? We have a much simpler explanation in here. Uh, it, this is a much simpler, simpler and uh, easy to use explanation. This is also from, uh, I picked it up from uh, redteams.net. A red team is a group of highly skilled people that continuously challenge the plans, defensive measures and security concepts. That is, that is pretty clear, right? This is actually called adversarial attack simulation. Uh, you know, that is what we are doing nowadays. Like, you know, I will, I will come to the next slide. Uh, is it the next slide yet? Yes, it is. Let me talk about a confusion here. So usually, uh, you know, uh, I have seen these comments, uh, you know, uh, with the, the sales people and, you know, usually the security services executives. I'm not, I'm not mocking anyone here. It is also very sad that many people are seeing red teams as penetration testers. They will be seeing like, you know, I am a part of internet red team. I, what, what I will ask like, what are you doing then? I am doing, uh, you know, penetration testing and doing web application penetration testing. Uh, I am doing, uh, maybe I am doing uh, application security, but I am a part of internal red team. But it's kind of, it is kind of confusing. It is also very sad that, you know, these people are seeing red teams as penetration testers. To explain the actual job, along with the red team professional, many, along, I mean, Along with the red team professional, many security folks are nowadays using the term additional acceleration as well. I have recently seen a couple of uh, similar job titles in LinkedIn. Uh, instead of uh, mentioning a red team professional, uh, they are listing uh, their profile as uh, adversarial attack simulation professional or, uh, you know, uh, like a uh, operator as adversarial attack simulation, something like that. Just to be more clear, other than, you know, confusing, using confusing times. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, okay. So, everyone, how is this picture? Did you like this picture? Could you guys please give me hearts or claps if you like this picture? And not getting hearts from everyone, I think. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, now I do. Actually, uh, you know, I really wanted to uh, show off this picture. Uh, you know, the perfect symphony between uh, the attackers and the defenders. Uh, we have it was created uh, based on the native Kerala martial art, which is called Kalari Paitu. Uh, that is the traditional martial art form of uh, our native place. So, based on that, we created this picture. You know, it, it was designed for a CTF competition uh, at a conference called Kokon, uh, you know, which is one of the uh, biggest cybersecurity conference in India. So uh, I really wanted to, you know, show you guys this picture, how we, uh, I think you guys really like it, right? You know, the actual symphony between red teams and blue teams based on our, our native martial art form. That, that was kind of a show off. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to the next slide. Most of the things uh, mentioned here, uh, that is from my own experience on the awesome contributors of the security community. Uh, most of the companies, uh, they already have their own uh, application security and uh, internal pen testing teams. So what if they want to move a more mature attack, uh, you know, simulation activities, uh, you know, it's like uh, 
uh, you know, they are doing uh, fine with AppSec and internal pen test, but they also want to uh, move into a more matured, uh, you know, uh, you know, attack simulation team. So I think I really think this talk it would be helpful for such people like who wants to build uh, an, an offensive internal team uh, for adversarial attack simulation. Uh, we are targeting, uh, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, audience here. I mean, the, the target audience. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, I think you can uh, you see this picture. So this like uh, we have created uh, this diagram, uh, you know, uh, for uh, you know one of our assignments, like uh, internal red team operations framework. Uh, there is still a working progress. Uh, we are still working on this. Uh, this is like um, uh, we have split it into five different phases. Uh, internal red team operation framework into five different phases. Each framework will be having, uh, you know, its own uh, its own models and uh, its own concepts. So based on that. Uh, we can start from the scratch and uh, you know get into more mature level uh, you know routines internal routines or uh, we can go into you know each of these phases individually uh, uh, next slide please uh, okay so this is the very first phase of uh, IRTO uh, which is internal red team operations uh, you know, it's like uh, building from the scratch. Uh, you know, we need to uh, get our budget approved. Uh, we really need to uh, defend the practical goals and objectives. So the objectives must be, you know, it's like you should ask yourself, why are we creating this team? Why do, what is the need of our, an internal red team in my organization? You know, so there should be a hard Each organization has its own different set of crown jewels. It is their sensitive data or assets. The crown jewels of, uh, you know, uh, our organization. Not only crown jewels, also people. For example, uh, uh, it is always about the critical assets or uh, you know critical people within an organization. For example, uh, if there is a uh, like you know a, a company which is handling or which is doing manufacturing, for them uh, it is their uh, you know formula patents and all the stuff. They have to keep it very safe, right? So considering that each organization has its own a valuable assets, its own data set, its own, uh, you know, data centers. So we need to identify the crown jewels of our own organization. From we need to create uh, rules of engagement and uh, we need to get assistance from the management and legal department. And more importantly, uh, you know, before moving forward, we need to understand the security posture of our organization. What are the security countermeasures or what are the security implementations uh, which are uh, there in uh, for an organization. So that is very essential to, uh, you know, uh, understand before even uh, going forward with this. And uh, like, you know, like I mentioned, identify the crown jewels and people. There is one more thing. People are always important. Uh, for example, you know that, uh, you know, there are many, many, many high level, ma high level executives are out there, how high, high level management people are out there. They are always, uh, you know, vulnerable to phishing attacks. I will, I will tell you why. Usually being technical people, uh, we don't have the urge to open our email all the time, right? But being business consultant or being business executives, they always have the, you know, kind of an itch to open and respond to their emails. So, uh, you know, they, they will always fall for a targeted phishing campaign. Uh, that is kind of, you know, uh, uh, the serious thing here. So, uh, along with the sensitive data, we also need to identify what are the key people uh, to my organizations. What if someone is, uh, you know, someone has compromised their personal account? What will happen to the organization? 
So this can be Uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, next slide is here, right? Okay. How many people know this? Only two of you guys are you know, knowing about this A team. Three, four. Okay. So recently, in 2010 or 2012, uh, you know there was a movie uh, star acted by uh, Bradley Cooper. Okay, okay. So the A team, the team and skill set. This is the most. Uh, you know, this is how, for example, just consider the A team. This is how a team should be. Yeah, like uh, the team must be diverse, skilled in different. This is not on one man's job. You know, they will have to work together as a team or work solo sometimes. Also, they will have to work under an excessive, uh, you know, amount of pressure. You know, they'll have, they'll be able to, they should be able to handle that pressure. It is, it is really important. For example, we know that Colonel Hannibal, right? He's also the leader of, uh, you know, uh, a team. And sometimes he's a solo player. Uh, and the A team, uh, they are strong individually and stronger as a team. Uh, that is uh, an important thing to have. You need to handle things personally and, uh, you know, you need to handle things alone and you need to handle things uh, as a team. You know, that should be, uh, you know, a skill set. So the team should also contain non-technical people. We talked about technical people, right? We talked that you know, uh, you know, to build a red team, we need highly technical, uh, technical people. You know, in different uh, areas of attack simulation and uh, offensive security operations. But along with that, the team should also contain non-technical people. So, how many of you have here? You know, uh, ever created a phishing campaign against any kind of organization? Uh, you know, personally, please. Uh, you know, give me some hearts. How many of you have hosted? A fishing campaign. Yeah, I am seeing a couple of, uh, you know, hearts in there. So let me ask you a question. So usually uh, the technical guys in your team or, uh, you know, kind of uh, very, you know, very people manage and friendly guys, uh, you know, who are usually uh, writing the fishing, fishing emails, the technical guy or, you know, more friendly, you know, uh, like uh, HR like uh, persons who is creating the uh, fishing mails for you. Um, guys, you can. If it is you, then react. you can give me a heart. Otherwise, you can just give me a, a, a palm or something. I'm not seeing anything. Okay, okay. I can see a couple of guys. Uh, they are saying that uh, you know they are writing. Uh, they 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 do write their own phishing campaign emails. So I will tell you something. You know, just just imagine a hardcore technical guy is writing a phishing email to, uh, you know, someone like a business executive. For example, if I am I am writing a phishing email, that will be more technical. You know, there will be these technical jargons and there will be a lot of you know technical ways. Uh, we don't want that, right? So if there is a uh, you know non-technical guy or a business guy or a, a, a human resources person in our team. We can ask them to uh, write the phishing email for us. Uh, the meaning, they can connect with people uh, compared to the technical technical guys. You know, they are more you know friendly guys, right? They are more into human resources and they can connect with other people perfectly easily. They speak you know a different language, so it is always better to have non-technical people in our our offensive team. You know, it always helps. Uh, could you please go to the next slide? Yeah, we have the next slide. So this is the phase two of uh, IRTO, uh, like uh, internal team uh, operations. 
so a couple of points here or a couple of steps here so external infrastructure it is always essential to mimic an adversary's action so we need to build an external red team infrastructure uh, for the beginning uh, you know start with uh, open source c tools implants frameworks and other tools uh, we can modify it based on you know uh, your requirement also uh, be friends always be uh, mm, uh, okay the third point identifying uh, the business specific risk so uh, us being in an internal red team is all about your organizations uh, and your organization security posture and you know uh, deployed uh, defense mechanisms etc so it is uh, a key point to identify uh, the the business specific risk it it, it can vary based on uh, you know the businesses and based on organizations and the third and the fourth point always be friends with the organization's blue team if you have a blue team in your company uh, you know be friends with them you know just trying to understand what are they doing you know in their daily lives you know what are the tools and techniques which are they using for uh, detecting uh, the attacks it is always uh, good to be in a uh, good relationship uh, it is always good to be in a good relation with your company's uh, you know cyber defense system or cyber defense team all of your uh, adversarial activities are there to make uh, you know the blue teams much stronger right but so it is very essential to have uh, a good relationship with your cyber defense team <sighs> okay uh like also you know don't uh, you know take it personally okay uh, you know uh, you know i just ask you to be friends with your organization's blue team on i try to be friends with an organization's blue team uh, and uh, in the end uh, she became my girlfriend uh, you know that's a long story so always uh, don't try so hard uh, you know just formally be friends with uh, you know the blue team of your organization you know don't take it personally uh, you know just a personal advice okay i'm uh, moving on to the next slide phase 3 uh could you please go to the phase 3 slide okay phase 3 um actually uh, this is where uh, we begin to uh, you know walk in our plan you can see uh, this phase 3 is where we start walking so we can use improved tools techniques and procedures and uh, you know we know about the current security mechanism right we talked about current security mechanisms in phase 1 and phase 2 for example uh, you know the need of using improved ttps for example what if your organization is not allowing powershell or any other scripts that is where we need to improve our ttps right uh, initially we identified that the current organization they do not allow partial scripts or any other script w script c script anything they are not allowing anything so in that case we need to uh, you know make some changes in our uh, in our techniques and you know improvise uh, we should find uh, you know the next feasible option uh, for example in this case uh, we can try uh, we can try running uh, unmanaged powershell maybe uh, the different systems they are not considering unmanaged powershell executables uh, you know as malicious so sometimes we we can you know bypass uh, the different uh, mechanisms in there and uh, okay from phase 1 and 2 we had identified the crown jewels and people and the vulnerable path needs to be fixed you know the vulnerable path you know which can uh, lead uh, the crown jewels into you know uh, a, a breach also the next point evaluation of incident response process this is also important what is your organization's process once it's been compromised how much time uh, it will take to detect the incident and respond to it that is also important very much important and uh, using the output of the previous uh, phases we could really improvise and make a new rto process documentation uh, there is a final final point 
uh, you know uh, we can stay, we can uh, learn from the previous phases and uh, what have we learned from the pre previous phases we can improvise from that and we can create a new operations manual or new operations process to move for move further so that is the phase 3 the end of phase 3 moving on to the uh, next slide phase 4 at IRTO phase 4 uh, we have the phase 4 here so it's like uh, you know uh, for example collaborative and continuous purple team exercises so whatever tasks are being done by the red team the end goal should be empowering uh, the blue team right so it's always better to organize a collaborative and continuous purple team exercises just uh, join forces with uh, the red teams and blue teams also bring in more tooling cap capabilities many interesting uh, platforms and tools are there uh, you know we should empower the red teams and blue teams uh, also uh, you can uh, perform a targeted campaign targeted and very specific campaigns against the crown jewels and key people uh, for example business executives uh okay uh you guys can see my screen right you guys can still see the screen right could you please uh, give me some hearts if you can see the screens i mean the slides okay 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 awesome 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 moving on to the next point uh over physical security assessment we we know that you know physical security assessment uh, they are a very big part of uh, red teaming activities so we can uh, in the phase 3 phase 4 uh, we can start uh, over physical security assessment we can identify the most important data centers manufacturing plants processing centers or anything uh, based on your company's business you know it may different there may be uh, you know different set of goals based on your company's uh, portfolio so uh, regarding the over uh, security assessment you could just uh, go to the premises walk around the premises with the person in charge and perform your review in front of the uh, you know in front of the uh, reviewer as well so that is like uh, you are not breaking into anything this is just over physical security assessment you are just uh, going to the client side and you are just walking around uh, you are just trying to find uh, as many as physical vulnerabilities in there and report them it is as simple as that so uh, uh, I, I, you can uh, you know uh, as a rough example you can refer the work of uh, deviant alum uh, you know in youtube he's the he's the legend he's the very best guy out there regarding physical uh, you know security assessments he's really awesome also uh, continuous awareness program for employees and key people like you know after uh, for example you've done a couple of phishing campaigns fierce fear phishing campaigns uh, you know you, you did some uh, bad usb drop and everything uh, but from that we need to share we need to create a set of training series and we need to perform continuous awareness and training for program for employees and uh, the, the top management so that they can protect themselves from the future attacks of real adversaries that is really important also an operational tip uh, you know when you go for uh, an overt uh, sec physical security assessment do not show up in there uh, you know with military apparel or a tactical bag uh, along with a laptop which is full of hacking stickers if you are going like this to the client side you know that raises a lot of eyebrows and that is going to be real funny people will be looking at you all the time who is this guy you know wearing this uh, tactical backpack and uh, a laptop full of sticks stickers so that's kind of very you know attractive thing right so do not do that uh, even if you are doing a covert assessment or an overt assessment it's pretty important uh going to the next slide uh phase 5 which is time to fight okay so this is the final phase of irto framework by by the time we we reach phase 5 
uh, we'll be having a, a, a kind of a, a mature uh, team operations capabilities. It is uh, the time to grow some wings and fly away, right? Not from the organization, but you know, uh, like uh, capabilities wise, just uh, you know, a team fly away. Okay, uh, this is the phase where we have a mature team operations capabilities. Uh, the, the main important thing would be by this time, you should have a significant improvement of organizational security posture because we have passed four different phases, right? We are uh, we did many things, you know, from the phase one. So by the time we reach phase five, it is very important to have significant improvement of organizational security posture. So that is a that is the clear proof of having a powerful and practical internal team. Uh, it is important for both systems and uh, the key people. So you can also start, uh, you know, uh, covered physical security assessment, uh, you know, instead of OWAT. Uh, you could just go to client sites uh, without telling them you are, you are an internal employee. You could do assessment. Uh, that will be very much fun. So also uh, by, the, by the time we reach phase five, we will have highly, highly skilled operators and uh, we'll be having custom tools custom you know scripts and uh, uh, you know custom attack patterns oh, that is very important that is very uh, interesting capability to have so also uh, continuous adversary simulation to keep the different days on their toes so by the time uh, we reach phase five uh, we we attend to many things right and one of the things would be one of the main thing would be Continuous simulation, you know, uh, just to make sure that that everything is going very well with the organization. Finally, continuous routine operations with the well-defined process. Uh, we, I, as an end result, we also will be having a, a well-defined process to carry this task forward. You know, uh, just repeat the process, make this as a cycle. Uh, you know, continuous routine operation will be. Uh, uh, like you know the actual results of uh, you know uh, reaching phase five that is really important uh, so we can assume we can assume that by the time uh, you know uh, we we reach the phase five you know there will be uh, a lot of significant changes uh, within our internal security posture that is pretty important to have uh, such a huge change and uh, moving on to the next slide So the, the five phases which I have shown you, uh, that is really customized or customizable. Like, you know, you can change that to your own needs and uh, you can add your own points. Even if you, you think that some of the points are misaligned uh, in different phases, you can just modify the, you know, steps and you can make it your own. That is pretty simple. And uh, coming back to the strategic and tactical plans, uh, you can see, you know, we can, there is a strategy plans, which is a total sum of a couple of practical plans, right? So the strategy plans, they are focusing on long term objectives, where the tactical plan focuses on short term engagements. So you can derive a couple of tactical plans and change them to, together, uh, you know, just to reach the highest goal. For example, uh, you are planning, you are creating a strategic plan for one year. So you can split that into three. So each tactical plan is having four months to attain a certain role, a certain goal. For example, uh, we, earlier we mentioned, we need to identify the critical uh, assets, uh, key people and crown jewels, right? So for the tactical plan on, uh, you can uh, take that as an objective and you can start identifying the critical assets and people. Then you can try to uh, you know, uh, perform adversarial simulation against those assets and people just to identify, you know, are they vulnerable to phishing campaigns? What are the results? And uh, we got a couple of credentials from these people. What are the privileges for these, uh, you know, credentials? So by the end of the tactical plan one, you will have a clear set of reports, uh, you know, uh, for your very first objective. So like that, 
uh, we can uh, you know chain a couple of tactical plans to uh, have a very long term ob objective you know that is uh, that is the uh, you know uh, end goal of creating uh, this uh, IRTO platform uh, you can create your own plans and uh, both tactical and strategic our end goal should be uh, you know attaining the long term objective okay cool uh, uh, could you go to the next slide please Okay, uh, this is the uh, final slide. Uh, if you guys have any questions related to, uh, you know, uh, the, the team uh, like uh, uh, faces and uh, maturity models, uh, you know, please feel free to ask me. If you have any questions, uh, you could just send some hearts and you can start talking. <laughs> Anyone? Uh, Okay. Okay, so um, all those who have questions, please uh, give some heart react so that I can unmute you all. Actually, I cannot hear you. Yeah, I can see and strike. Just a second, Abhijit. Could you please uh, come near me? I cannot hear you. Just a second, Abhita. Just give him the microphone. Can you hear me? Yeah, tell me. Yeah, All right. Um, so, do you model the uh, you model your adversarial campaigns off of APPs? Uh, could you please come again? Uh, do you model your uh, adversarial you model your campaign adversarial off campaign of campaign a APTs? A APTs? Yeah, APT emulation, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we can, because I think uh, I stated in one of my previous slides, um, that is in phase two, I think. Okay. Uh, there is adversarial emulation. So, okay. I mean, as a beginning in phase two, uh, you can start uh, uh, doing emulation using, uh, you know, Atomic Red Team or Caldera. Also, you can use uh, Mitrai framework. Uh, you know, there are a couple of APTs are listed in there. Uh, you can, you know, check those APTs and uh, start collecting their commands and you can execute them in your, you know, test environment. So the yeah. end result would be, you can understand the detection capabilities of your blue team. That is really cool. Mitra is doing uh, a wonderful job, you know, collecting all these uh, emulation and, uh, you know, simulation plans. Okay, cool. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So you could uh, uh, always uh, reach me on Uh, is anyone asking any questions? Could you please oh, raise yeah. your hands or like, you know, give me some hearts. I'll come near you. Could you throw some hearts? I'll, I'll come, I'll come to you. Okay. Okay. So if there are no questions, uh, you can always reach me on Discord. Uh, it is ABS on 474. Also, uh, you can reach me on my Twitter account, uh, which is uh, Abhijit BR. And uh, could you guys please to move to the next slide? Uh, next slide, please. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you to attend my talk. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone, for uh, you know being in the virtual village hosted by DevCon groups. Uh, thanks a lot. Also, I would like to uh, you know thank uh, Jason E Street and uh, DevCon groups to uh, to give me this opportunity to stand here and uh, take this presentation. Also, I would like to thank uh, TX and uh, his fabulous DevCon group Delhi. Uh, also, uh, DevCon group Trivandrum Mumbai. Thank you, thank you, everyone.
case.